I'm Megan Deputy. And I'm Rob Thompson. And this week we are in New York State at this extraordinary alleged haunted location. Um, many EVPs, many shadow figures. Um, and there's definitely, a, a, I don't want to use the D word, but there's a darker entity, uh, a soul that's here that uh, likes to screw with people. Everything from disembodied voices, shadow figures, full-bodied apparitions. Um, there's a lot more to this place. It's the land, even more than the house. And a lot more besides being reported here, some of it corroborated with video and photos. But we'll find out for ourselves tonight as we investigate the Hinsdale House on this week's episode of The Ghost Finders. The Haunted House in Hinsdale, upstate New York. Perhaps the most famous haunted house in the United States has all the elements of a good ghost story. A mysterious history, strange sightings, unexplainable events, and even an actual exorcism. The house, located on McMahon Road, first gained notoriety when a book, Echoes of a Haunting, was published in September 2000, written by Clara Miller Dandy. Clara and Phil Dandy lived in the house along with their children in the early 1970s. During their time there, they were visited by many spirits. Eventually, Father Alphonsus, a priest from St. Bonaventure University, was at the house performing an official exorcism and more than once. This worked for quite a while, but as time went by, the spirits returned and the Dandy family lost their battle and ended up leaving the house for good. In 2006, an episode of A Haunting aired on the Discovery Channel. It was based on the Dandies and their experiences at the house. As the years passed by, a few families have lived in the home but didn't stay for long. With this rich backstory, history, and so many sightings, we just had to bring you to the haunted Hinsdale House in Hinsdale, upstate New York, on this week's episode of The Ghost Finders. It's here with my team investigating right here in the kitchen. Um, this was at a time when the house was real close to being torn down. Um, all the ductwork was ripped out, all the electrical was ripped out, and there was, there was no reason for any of this to happen, but we were in the kitchen. I had K2 meter in my hand, and I asked for an uh, entity that I believed was here, and the K2 meter lit up in my hand, and my whole arm got numb. Um, I continued to have what I believe was a conversation with uh, Flo Misnick, um, many EVPs, many shadow figures, um, and there's definitely, a, a, I don't want to use the D word, but there's a darker entity, uh, a soul that's here that uh, likes to screw with people. Um, there's a lot more to this place. It's the land, even more than the house. Uh, there's a story of a hanging tree that was on the property where people were killed for their wrongdoings. And then there's a story of a, a girl that was hung um, for a wrongdoing that she actually didn't do, and we believe her spirit may be still on the outside of the house. On the, on the land itself, before the house was built, there was an Indian massacre. There was a, a witch that was burned at the stake. I mean, there, there's so much that has to do with this land and property, and it's like a big giant puzzle that we're all trying to learn and put together. There's, I don't know who it is, but there's a, an elderly male who's upstairs. 
possibly ill or possibly asleep, but that's where I'm, what I'm seeing in his mind's eye. Uh, I'm seeing a six foot five, uh, big, large nose. Okay, so this is a Native American uh, in, individual, and he's full regalia, and he is. He's blowing me away because mm -hmm. I know stuff that I have never said here. Mm -hmm. I mean, to you guys. He's he, he he's um, not attached to this house, but this house is attached to this mountain, and this mountain hill we call it but mountain, whatever. This land is sacred mm -hmm. to his people and to spirit. Now before we uh, before I take off, I just wanted to kind of take you upstairs and show you this room real quick. Okay, I know you haven't been up there yet. So, no. all right. Oh wow! Yeah, they don't make houses like these anymore. They don't. Um, we often, and you've you've seen them downstairs, the flies in the middle of the winter, mm -hmm. the 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 bugs. Um, when I first purchased this house, there was a beehive, a honey beehive of about a half a million honeybees in the floorboards of this room. It seems like all of the bugs are attracted to this room. You go in that room, you're going to feel a little different. I just feel this absolute despair. Just, just let it end. When's it gonna end? Just let it end. Just, just live, let it end. Just a, just, just like a. What did I do to, to, to this to happen to me? What have I done? guilt and despair. It, it's almost like this is like a vortex. It's almost like this is coming into this room is like a swimming into a, a, a big vortex, um, thick like molasses, uh, full of, of uh, dank despair and darkness and sickness and guilt. And I'm not really wanting to be in this room anymore. <laughs> at all. <laughs> so one of the things that we're going to do and then in Megan's going to do is, she, is her pagan ritual is to bless and sweeten the the soil, the land, the spirit, is the sacred ancient spirit and um, connect that again with its Native American source energy. That would be awesome. I give, I do not take. I give back to thee. I give back to thee. I give back to thee. I give, I do not take. I give back to thee. I give back to thee. I come with ears that wish to listen. I come with eyes that wish to see. <laughs> 